Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And over the past few years, I've had a lot of young hitters ask me to take a look at their swings. And so over this time period, I've really seen what a lot of young hitters do well and then a lot of mistakes that are common across the board with young hitters too. And so in today's video, I wanted to share with you five big mistakes that I see all the time with a lot of hitters. And I wanted to share these with you so hopefully you can avoid them in your swing and really hit the ball more consistently and harder and further. So I think this video is gonna be really valuable to you. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first common mistake that I see with a lot of hitters is when they get into their stance, they become still as a statue, all right? And there's a couple of problems with this. The first problem is you've probably heard that an object in motion tends to stay in motion and an object at rest tends to stay at rest, right? And so when you step into the batter's box and you get completely still as a statue like this in your stance, it becomes much harder for you to get your momentum going for your load, right? We have a load, we have to gather a weight shift back, right? That's really the first movement of our swing is we, we load obviously, right? To then stride forward. And you know, if you're, sitting at rest, if you're still as a statue, it's gonna make it very, very hard for you to start getting that momentum, right? So that's the, the first reason. Um, and the next reason is you get really, really tense when you do that. So just try it at home, you know, get into your stance and just try to stay as still as possible, right? Like you can't move at all. Just try to stay over exaggerated, stay still as possible and do that for 30 seconds or so. And you're gonna notice how uncomfortable and how tense that you get when you do that, right? And so plenty of times, plenty of times it happens when you step into the batter's box, right? And the pitchers, they take a little bit longer to get their sign. So if you're staying nice and loose and relaxed, you're totally fine with that. It doesn't really matter, right? Cause you're loose, you're relaxed, you're ready to roll. He can be up there for two minutes getting his sign, right? And then when he's ready, I'm ready, you know? But if you step into the batter's box, and you just get still as a statue and he takes a long time for him to get his sign and then actually get ready to deliver the pitch by the time that he winds up and by the time it's too late to call time you're not going to be ready to hit so try to avoid being still as a statue in the box you don't have to be you don't have to have a ton of movement right i'm talking a little bit of movement it can be something like this you know pre-pitch something like this or you can have the bat up here like this and wiggle your fingers have a little bit of a bat waggle you can have the handle resting kind of on your neck here, right? Just back and forth a little bit. More like Robinson Cano, just back and forth a little bit. You don't have to be moving all over the place because the more you move, the more your head moves and you don't have to, in fact, I don't recommend, you don't have to wag your bat like this, but just a little bit of movement so it's easier to transition into your load. So the next mistake that I see that's very common with young hitters is too small of a stride. And this is the perfect angle to see this at. So a lot of the times what you see is you see uh, a lot of times it's with kids with you know a narrower stance to begin with and what they do is they go into their weight shift back their load and then they only stride you know about this far so they maybe pick their foot up and put it down like this the problem with this is kind of twofold number one this here doesn't really generate any momentum right this doesn't generate any momentum but number two and the bigger problem is it gets you into a, a pretty poor hitting position let me ask you this, what do we hit with? Do we hit with our hands? Do we hit with our wrists? Do we hit with our forearms? Sure, they're part of it, right? But no, where does power come from? It comes from our big muscles, it comes from our legs. And so when we take a short stride like this, we are unable to really sink down into a good launch position where we're utilizing all of our power that our legs are generating, right? We don't sink down into a good launch position, so we're not using our legs, we're pretty much hitting with our upper body. Right? And then a lot of times these hitters, they'll make contact with the ball and they'll be way too upright like this. Their angle of their, their back leg here, instead of being like 110 degrees or less, way up tall like this. They're not doing a good job at really staying back and hitting against a firm front side and having this good L shape going on here, okay? And so you wanna be careful when teaching this um, you don't want players to overstride, but a good rule of thumb is when you, I don't care how narrow your stance is to start. It doesn't matter if your, your feet are literally right next to each other, or if you've got a stance like Albert Pujols. Albert Pujols doesn't have a big stride. He just lifts up 
his front heel and puts it back down. But when he gets to his launch position, which is technically when your front foot lands, right? The rule of thumb is you want the distance between your feet to be about the same distance as your inseam. Another great way to look at it is put your baseball bat, this works with most hitters, put your baseball bat on the ground in between your feet and the distance between your feet should be about the distance between your baseball bat, okay? So when you do take an appropriate stride like that, what that allows you to do is it allows you to really see automatically I'm sunk down lower to the ground as opposed to up here like this, I'm automatically sunk down lower to the ground, I'm engaging my legs. My front foot lands slightly open about 45 degrees. I'm in a really good launch position, ready to explode on the baseball. So make sure to avoid the short stride. We don't wanna overstride, but we definitely wanna to get to a good stride length that gets us into a good launch position where we can actually use our legs and hit for more power. Another mistake is with this front arm here. So for a right-handed hitter, your left arm, okay? Now, what I see a lot of the times is players don't get enough length in that front arm. They don't get enough separation. They don't get enough stretch to really maximize their bat speed and their power. So a lot of the times what you'll see is, and I don't care where you start with your hands. It's irrelevant if you start with them here or back here or high or low, it really doesn't matter. What, where you start, your stance is just a starting point, but it does matter what you look like when your front foot hits the ground and you get to your launch position. So far too common what I see is players will start with their hands pretty much here, right? And watch my hands now. They start here and they load and they stride and their hands have not done anything. They haven't gotten any length. See how I have length here with this front arm? Not completely barred out. You still want flex in it, but see how this has length here? as opposed to this doesn't when they're in here like this. So if you start with your hands in here and you keep your hands in here like this, at this point, all you have is to throw your hands at the ball instead of generating that good separation that we're looking for. And so the key is how you get to that, that front arm length position, right? Because another problem, this is not necessarily a, a problem included in this particular video of the five, um, but another problem is when players load, they try to artificially push their hands back, load their hands to get to this position. That's not the way it works either, right? What actually happens is when you load, your hands don't move a whole lot. They might move a little bit. They might move, you look at Josh Donaldson, his hands, right? When he goes into his leg kick, his hands actually move down towards his knee like this, right? So when he's loading, his hands are not pushing back. It's as he's striding towards the pitcher, that's when He's striding forward, his hands are staying back. It's not him pushing it back, right? He goes like this, as he's striding forward, he's going that way and his hands are staying back here. That's how he gets to that good position with length in this arm. All right, so let's move on. This one's a big one as well. A lot of hitters have a poor angle with their bat and specifically what I mean by a poor angle with their bat is when their front foot hits the ground. So you'll notice, a lot of these revolve around get to a good launch position, right? If you get to that good position, it's gonna make hitting a lot easier. It's not guaranteed to make you, you know, make contact every single time, but it's gonna definitely improve your chances as opposed to if you get to a poor launch position, right? Because if you get to a poor launch position, a poor starting point, whatever, it's gonna make it much harder to finish well if you can't even start well, right? Does that make some sense? And so what I mean with a poor bat angle is specifically, again, when that front foot hits the ground and you get to this launch position here, a lot of the times, what, what should your bat angle look like? If you look at big league hitters, their, their bat, their knob, you can draw a line, their knob is facing down towards the catcher like this, okay? It's not facing the on-deck circle or the first base dugout, right? It's definitely not facing the pitcher. It's not facing the backstop because that would be wrapping our bat, right? And then we have a really long distance. If our, if our knob is facing back that way, we have a really long distance to go to make contact with that ball. So if you look at, look at the best hitters in the game, the angle of their bat, their knob is facing down towards the catcher. And so you should try your best to get to that position too. You know, a lot of, a lot of hitters think, well, why would I not want, wouldn't I want my knob facing the pitcher, right? Because if the knob is facing the pitcher like this, wouldn't my bat be on playing with the pitch already? And the problem with that is it causes other issues. So if your knob is facing the pitcher, guess what's gonna happen typically? Your back elbow is gonna do this 
Your back elbow is gonna lead the race between your back elbow and your knob, right? And that's gonna be bat drag. Your, bat, your barrel's gonna really, really drop like this. And when you get to the point of contact, everything's dragging behind. So you're gonna hit a lot of pop-ups in that case. So I'm telling you, just freeze frame it. When great hitters watch a home run swing in slow motion or a, a double in the gap in slow motion, whatever, and you're gonna see more times than not, where is their bat angled when that front foot hits the ground. And the last mistake that's super common is poor extension. And what you have to understand about extension is if you correct a lot of the other mistakes that we talked about in this video, right? Let's say that when you got to your launch position, your knob recently has been kind of pointing almost towards the first baseman instead of towards the catcher, right? So if you get a better bat angle, if you do all of the things properly leading up to the point of contact, right? If you, you've heard the term stay inside the ball, if you do a good job of staying inside the ball and staying connected and keeping things tight to your body, right? When you get to the point of contact, all you have to think about at that point is driving through the ball and extension, getting good extension is going to happen automatically, right? Extension is really a byproduct. It's not something that, you know, you really, really have to force and try to do if you do everything else correct in your swing. But here's what I see a lot of times with hitters is they look good, right? And they get to the point of contact and they look good. But right after the point of contact here, instead of driving through the ball like this and getting to a position where, you know, you don't want extension at the point of contact. You don't want your arms out like this at the point of contact. At the point of contact, they're still bent, but then they straighten out well after contact, you get to extension. But a lot of times what I see hitters do is they get to the point of contact and they look good, but then instead of getting extension, they roll their wrists like this, right? They get flippy, they roll their hands. What that does, your bat is on plane, on plane, on plane with the pitch, right? On plane at the point of contact. And right after contact, when you roll, your bat comes off plane with the pitch. And so the goal needs to be obviously to maximize our chances of success, we would love our bat to be on plane really, really early in the zone, right? And we would also love our bat to stay on plane for as long as possible because that means our timing doesn't have to be perfect. We wanna have good timing, right? That's obviously a goal. Have good timing, you know, get your front foot down, not early, but on time. Make contact at the right place. But wouldn't it be nice if we could afford to have our timing not be perfect all the time? We could afford to be a little bit late or a little bit early and still, you know, not roll over, but still hit the ball hard. So that's what getting good extension um, is gonna do for you. So that's it. I really hope these tips helped you out. And look, if you're serious about improving your hitting, if you wanna hit more doubles, more triples, more home runs, and if you ultimately wanna have more confidence on the field and more fun playing this game of baseball, then I would love for you to watch our free on-demand hitting training. To do that, all you have to do is click on the link in the pinned comment down below from Ultimate Baseball Training, or just go to improvemyhitting.com. That's improvemyhitting.com, and it's 100% free. So go ahead and watch that now. And last thing, if you're not subscribed to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the UBT family. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.